Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today I'm coming back with more 2020, 2022. I think I said too many 20s there. 2020, 2020, 2020, 2022 lists of videos for you. Basically, if you've missed it already, I've already done a few videos in the series. I've done, uh, I don't remember which ones have gone up, but I had like the best 15 games of 2022, uh, 15 games of 2022 I still want to play. And now we have 15 games of 2022. What's this list again? Oh yeah, Hidden Gems. Hidden Gems. The 15 2022 Hidden Gems. Apologies. I, I put together the list, uh, two notes right before this video. I put together the list of the videos of the 2022 titles that have gone down a bit for me, that have faded a bit for me, and then I put together this one, and then I had to remember by looking around at the table around me, which was actually in this video. In any case, now that we've uh, managed to make our way through 2020, 2022, and figuring out which video this is, like I said already, this is basically 2022 Hidden Gems. 15 games in 2022 that I think you deserve to know more about, or deserve to know that, I mean, deserves a weird word, but that I want to talk to you about as far as games that you might not have seen as much hype about, as much buzz about, but I think are worthy of your attention. To, to put together this list, I needed a few criteria. The first criteria I needed is that they have to be 15 games that I enjoy, like, and recommend. The second criteria is that to some extent, they have to be less known or popular to some extent. Some of these will be more known than others. By the time you go through the end of this list, you may, especially if you watch my channel, you may have seen me talk about these games before, but in general, in the board game space, I think these games get a little less attention. So it wasn't purely about rankings. I actually have this list ordered by BGG rankings from the highest to the lowest BGG overall ranking, not score, ranking. The problem is sometimes the game is just not as well rated, which means even though I really like it, so for example, Mythic Mischief was, I don't know, it's a 2022 title, but it was outside of the top 1,000 games of all time, but I didn't include it here because I think it is fairly well known, versus other titles I included here because I think they're a drop less well known. So basically not completely scientific. My own opinion combined with BG rankings combined with more of my own opinion to exclude things that I think are already known about. Now I will say before I dive into this video, as usual, it's like four minutes before I dive into this video, but I will say that I'm going to go ahead for each of these games, I'm going to go ahead and list where they currently are in the BGG rankings, what number they are. The lowest one we have is going to be 2165 on BGG. The highest is going to be 8,602. That's gonna be our number one pick. That's what I'm ordering this list. But I'll also say once upon a time, not that long ago, honestly, I put together a list of uh, of ten games that but ten games that should have been in the BGG top one thousand, and then I didn't put that video up for like four weeks. And four weeks later, three of those were already in the top one thousand. So just as a general note, I don't imagine any of these are going to be in the top one thousand by the time you watch this. I some of them might climb a little bit. But I do need to be mindful of uh, how time sensitive some videos are because that one moved a whole lot faster than I thought it would. In any case. With that, let's go ahead and start with my number 15. My number 15 pick is going to be coming in BGG rank 2165. That's going to be Air, Land, and Sea, Spies, Lies, and Supplies. This continues the series of Air, Land, and Sea. We had Air, Land, and Sea, then we had Air, Land, and Sea, whatever, the expansion. We had Critters at War, and we had Critters at War, Flies, Lies, and Supplies. So technically, it's Critters at War, Flies, Lies, and Supplies. But this is a delightful game. I, I actually, I don't know even which one is rated. I might have had, it might be Air, Land, and Sea, Spies, Lies, and Supplies, as opposed to Flies, Lies, and Supplies. The basic idea, Air, Land, and Sea is an amazing game. It's one of the first games I ever reviewed on the channel. It has a secondary version of it. I mean, it has an expansion, but then it has a knockoff version. Knockoff sounds bad. It has a, a cartoon version called Critters at War, which also has those versions. So I think the one coming in at 2165 is actually Spies, Lies, and Supplies, not Flies, Lies, and Supplies, but that's either here or there. The point is, now, you may have seen Airline and Sea, and you may have given the uh, variant. It's a standalone expansion. So it is an expansion. You can mix things together, but it's also standalone. You may have given that game a pass. You may have said, hey, I haven't heard that much buzz about it. And you're right. You probably haven't heard that much buzz about it. And yet it's delightfully good. It is not as good as Airline and Sea. The basic Airline and Sea, or the basic Critters at War, is a better game. But this is still a very good game that I think stands on its own. It is worth playing on its own. It's worth mixing and matching for vari variability. It's worth mixing and matching so you don't get locked in certain patterns. I think this is a great game that has not gotten as much of a spotlight on it because of its big brother, but it's still a great game that does deserve to uh, exist, both on its own and in your collection in general. Coming at number 14 was when I debated whether this is too well known to put on the list, but I decided to put on the list and you'll see why. This is basically going to be coming in at 24-24 on BGG, and that's going to be Hamburg from Queen Games. Now Hamburg, this is the uh, new version of Bruges basically, Bruges is the original Stefan Feld title, Queen Games City Collection from the City Collection from Stefan Feld and Queen Games, brings those back with um, slight tweaks and adjustments and new looks, and brings them back in print, and Hamburg is that game. This is also the only game on the list today that I haven't actually played. I've played Bruges extensively. I have not played Hamburg. By the time you watch this video, I may have. 
But as of right now, I have not yet played Hamburg. This one, I think, does not get as much attention as other Stefan Feld titles, even with the reprint and all that, even with the Queen games being in these games back, I still don't think this gets as much of a spotlight compared to games like Castle of Burgundy or... What else does Stefan Feld do that's really popular? Marrakesh has been pretty popular. I don't know, there's lots of, lots of popular Stefan Feld games. There's not, I'm not sure which ones offhand are, are super popular. But uh, Bruges over here, I think this one is Bruges slash Hamburg. I think it's one that doesn't get as much attention as I think it deserves. It is my second favorite Stefan Feld title, right after Castle of Burgundy. There, honestly, there's so many great ones, but it is what it is. I, I think it's a delightful experience, and Hamburg is an opportunity to get it when you otherwise wouldn't. Although, I can't tell you whether I prefer Hamburg or Bruges, not yet. I can tell you I've heard a lot of people who've played both who say they do prefer for Hamburg. So I'm not there yet. I like the look of Bruges better, which is a little complicated. But if you haven't played that one, it's a basically multi use cards, tons of typical Stefan Feld. Everything gives you points. It's about how you get those points. But it's a very tight game. Lots of dice placement. It's not really dice placement. You're using dice, but you're using things based on the value of the dice, but it's a collective set of dice. It's not. It's a very, very different game. The cards you play have colors which correlate to the dice. Lots of things you can do, but it's a delightfully delightful experience that I really recommend. Command number 13. This one, again, semi-well-known. I don't think it's gotten as much uh, love as I certainly have for it, but I've seen enough people who have the same thoughts and feelings that I do that I still want to talk about it because this is going to come in at 2675 in BGG, and that's the Elder Scrolls Skyrim from Odyphius. This is one that a lot of people are given a flack over how it looks, and I don't disagree. I think it looks like a game that's using PC art, that's using video game art for. It doesn't have a great look to it. And I've seen a lot of people who bounced off of it saying it wasn't for them. But I've also seen a lot of people who mirrored my thoughts on the game, which was, you play it and you're kind of like just one more turn just one more turn just one more turn you have this drive to keep playing this drive to keep seeing what the game has to offer i really had fun with all those girls uh, skyrim i do think it's a little underrated especially because it was followed by uh chip theory games and their elder scrolls uh betrayal of second era is coming out that's gonna be coming at some point and that definitely uh, people who wanted that 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 itch to scratch the skyrim itch are looking at that instead i think that fine i do think it's fantastic make no mistake but i do think elder scrolls skyrim while it doesn't look the best and it's not necessarily the best game it does it did something right it captured that feeling of you just want to keep playing it's a worthwhile game to get a look at if you have a chance it is a little on the expensive side that's always the tricky part to balance then again so is Hamburg for that matter but Elder Scrolls Skyrim is going to be our number 13. Coming in number 12 we have Tiwanuku over here I think this game is fantastic originally branded as Pachamama Tiwanuku over here this one came from uh, sit down games you could play it on BGA and this is basically Minesweeper. It, it has a cooperative version, although I usually prefer to play it competitively, but it's all about trying to find the patterns of, of what's going on at the table as you deductively try to get a, a specific unique puzzle that you're going to start solving to try to figure out how to get as many points as possible. It is both mechanically satisfying because there actually is a lot of gamification going on outside of the pure deduction, meaning deduction is a part of it, but you also know th need to think strategically. If I get this, then that. I might know exactly where that is, but this might be worth the gamble because it'll give me more points. So there's both general gameplay mechanics at play, as well as deduction, as well as unique gear mechanism, and again, try it on BGA, see if it's for you. I do think playing it in person has a nicer feel to it, but Tiwanuku is coming in at 29.46 on BGG, and it's one of my favorite deduction games. I don't think it's my favorite deduction game, but it's definitely up there amongst my favorite deduction games. Coming at 29.87, we have arguably my favorite game on this list personally, but again, I'm ranking this based on BGG over here. 29.87 is going to be DEI Divide et Impera. Uh, I think it's what it is, Divided in Para from Ludus Magnus Studios. This is an area control dudes in a map game that is so fun to play. It's powers and abilities. It's rules that you immediately break. It's uh, multi-layers as far as how you're navigating around the board. You only have four rounds of play. You only have two out of three. You have six actions per round. There's 24 actions the whole game. But what you do in those actions, and half those actions are used to buy new cards, which feels like you're spending half your actions to just get new stuff in the game and not even actually be able to do things. So not half your actions, but maybe like five, six of those 24. So you're constantly trying to build the best combination of, of your inherent pa player powers, unlocking new abilities, and the right cards that feed into those abilities, either to enhance your strong points or complement your weak points, as you figure out the area control puzzle to score as many points in the game. I think it's incredible, I think it's amazing, I love this game, it is one of those games that I'm gonna like, there's always a few games, there's always a few games every year that I absolutely love, and some of them line up with general, general population. I'm like, oh yeah, we all love this game, and others I'm like, you might like it, I love it and I will champion this this year, next year, the year after, after that because I love those games and DEI is one of those I don't think it's gotten as much love as I have for I've certainly seen people who mirrored my opinion so it's not I'm not alone by any means but it's one that I think it deserves more attention it's an excellent area control dudes in a map game with very low conflict there's not a lot of killing in the game so if you like something like El Grande I think DEI is right up your alley 
Coming in number 10, we have a coming, it's ranked 3160. This is going to be the Age of Atlantis. I only have one play of this under my belt, so take it with a tiny grain of salt. I always encourage that when I have. I, the, the, I think usually my first play lines up with my follow-up plays. Usually I would say 75% of the time my instincts after one play line up for the next two, three, four plays. But there are times where I play it a second time and I'm like, oh, nope, that magic was particular. It was particular about the game, the people, the situation, how I did, how I didn't do. All those things line up. So I don't know for sure, but the Age of Atlantis, based on my one play, was great. It's been a year since my play, unfortunately, because time happens and uh, things get busy and I should probably review this at some point, but I need to get more plays in. But the Age of Atlantis is, what is it even? It's like, it's, it's tech trees and abilities and upgrading your dice, which are kind of your workers as you try to deal with some degree of area control, but not really area control, more movement around the map. It's an interesting game mechanism as far as how it scores. It's very different, very unique but it's so much fun. It's from Eldorado Games, so usual disclaimer, at, or not usual, but I try to give a disclaimer when I talk about companies that have had issues with delivering. Uh, Eldorado Games is currently in a weird place where we don't know what's happening with their next game. They've communicated for a long time, but they've also been AWOL at times. So if you are trying to hunt down this game or if you backed it and haven't gotten it, I apologize. It's not the easiest to get, but ultimately it is very much an excellent game in my opinion. I think it's worth trying to track down if you can. And um, yeah, it's uh, the Age of Atlantis. Coming in at number nine, ranked 3214 on BGG, we have Keystone North America. Now, depending on when this video goes up, there's actually a reprint campaign coming or active or already ended uh, on this uh, on this on this campaign. I believe it's launching very soon, and um, but, but depends on when this video goes up. But Keystone North America, I mean, for Rose Gauntlet Games, I love this game, and I'm a little annoyed that they have a uh, new edition coming out that's going to replace the look of it. And I'm annoyed because I want that new edition. I think it's a I think it's an excellent game, and I think it is a game worth hunting down. It's one of those games that has not gotten this a lot of love overall. It's been appreciated by some. I'm definitely in that category. There's tons of these point scoring optimizations games you try to lay cards down into your grid puzzle out how to get the best return on it it's a solid solo mode a solid cooperative a solid competitive mode and for me i've just found the puzzle is rewarding not all puzzles i find equally rewarding this is one that has worked for me and it's yeah it's a fascinating game of trying to line up cards based on your own private goals based on the cards themselves and trying to get as many points as possible just in your grid a four by four grid that you're building really enjoyed this one and again strong solo mode as well that further enhances my opinion of it Coming at number eight, we have 3503 on BGG. It's going to be Museum Picture. This is coming to you from Holy Grail, Holy Grail Games, which sadly have a, you know, shut down. They're, they're gone the way of the Dodo, unfortunately. Although I hope this game does get picked up and reprinted. I think Museum Picture is excellent. I have both expansions for this game. I have not played the expansions. This is a game of trying to get cards into your museum, engaging with trades with the Central Museum, trying to get the right combination of cards into your own personal gallery as you figure out how to get those cards, which actions to take, and which cards will nicely pair with each other in the game. It is very similar to Encyclopedia, in my opinion. I think it plays a little simpler, plays a little faster, but it's not too simple. I think the original Museum game, the original Museum, because if you if you've seen the original museum game, I think it's too light. Museum Pictura, I think, is a nice escalation of set collection that gives you a little more gameplay, and Encyclopedia further leans into that, but Museum Pictura, solid game, coming at 3503 on BGG. My number seven is coming at 3877 on BGG, and this is Ragnarok's from Grey Fox Games. Now, Grey Fox has had their own issues over the years, including with Ragnarok's as far as production or issues or whatnot, but this game is one of my favorite games of this type of game. And by type of game, there's a bunch of games in this genre. There's Battleship, there's Terra Nova, there's Ragnarok's, there's others that I don't think or know off offhand. But the general idea is you're trying to move pieces around the board to create a own locked off set of terrain, which what you're doing is you're creating grouping of terrain to try to score as many points. So I move my Viking and I put down a little block. You move your Viking, put down a little block. And we rinse and repeat how we move and create structured set off regions of the board. But what set Ragnarok's apart from these games is like Santorini before, it's from the same designer, it basically has this extra level of unique player powers that you give to each player from a whole host of like 40, 50 player powers and each player power changes up the way you play the game. So it's a tight, abstract game of trying to figure out how to place and set yourself up and get all these things from it and overall, I really enjoy what it's trying to do. I arguably enjoy it more than Santorini. I think Santorini is a better game to be very clear. Production wise, I kind of wish the Vikings or art was different. I don't know. I like the look. Santorini has a much more premium, so solid look to it but ultimately Ragnarok's the gameplay is ridiculously satisfying and I still enjoy this and recommend this one very much. 
Coming in at number five, at number six, we have ranked 3925. This is coming to you from 20th Century Games, and this is Splitto. Splitto is a very simple game of basically having a bunch of cards where you're going to draft a bunch of cards and basically try to be gathering those cards, putting them down between you or your opponent on both sides. Because this is one of those games where your score at the end of the game is going to be the score of the two sides that you've built, which means every player is invested in building up both sides because, if I recall correctly, you multiply the two sides, which means you really want them as balanced as possible. You can't afford to build up one, not the other you really need to balance them as well as possible that means every player is contributing to both sides of the of their of their you know team as you figure out both your personal goals and the public goals to score as many points by how you place these cards down and how you score points for them i find splitto very rewarding it's my favorite game currently of that genre of the we work together and score things up it's simple it's straightforward it plays in 10 minutes it teaches in five minutes it is a fun rewarding game i'm surprised it's not ranked as higher higher than it is but it's going to be split up in 20th century games ranked uh 39.25 and my number six. Coming into my number five. Looks like it was going to fall for a second. My number five. Another small box game is going to be coming in at 4,042 on BGG. And this is going to be Wizards of the Grimoire. Wizard of the Grimoire is delightful. You can play this one on Board Game Arena. I think you can play Splitto 2. Uh, but you could play this one on Board Game Arena uh, if you want to give it a shot and see if it's for you. It's basically a head-to-head -head dueling card game for two mages. I don't think the game visually pulls me in. It's not bad, don't get me wrong. But like visually, like it's fine. The art looks fine. The graphic design looks fine. It's just, But the problem is card games are so easy. Especially like head-to-head -head card games. They're a dime a dozen to make. So many people make them. So many people create them. And so many of them are forgettable. It kind of takes more work to build a board game than a card game. And so I kind of wrote off Wizard of the Grimoire when I first heard about it until I started playing it and I thought it was so satisfying. The execution of how you play your cards, of how you stack your mana, of how you use your mana to trigger spells, of how you line up the perfect complement of six spells, how you have the room and opportunity to discard a spell to get a new one, all while you try to build up an engine that defends against your opponent while pinging your opponent at the same time. If you like dueling games, if you like MTG, if you like uh, Radlands, if you like that genre and style of game, Wizards of the Grimoire is one that I highly recommend you check out. They had an expansion on Kickstarter, Shifting Sands, I believe it was called. But Wizards of the Grimoire, my number five for Hidden Gems from 2022. Coming in at number four is the first and only game I don't actually have on the table, unfortunately. I played this one recently, and this is going to be Ostia. Coming in at 45-23, Ostia is one that I didn't play in 2022. I played that one recently when they had the Pirates expansion on Kickstarter. They were launching the new Pirates expansion to Ostia. I had a chance to play Ostia, so I played Ostia, and then I played Ostia with the Pirates expansion. So I've played it both ways. And I think Ostia by itself is very good, but I don't know if it's necessarily a keeper. I think Ostia with the Pirates expansion is even better. This is one where it's basically coming down, comes down to a rondel. Uh, Mancala mechanic. You're basically kind of trying to move ships around your own harbor, dropping them off, and where you activate things, you activate it based on the strength of the ships you've dropped off. You also, well, you activate, you actually activate things based off the, you, you put resources down based on the strength of the amount of ships you have in the you start, and then you drop them off along the way, activating a certain region as well. But I find that Ostia is a, Ostia is a delightful game of trying to manage multiple aspects of how to build your ships, build your buildings, move around the board, things like that, gather resources, trade them for cards, and you have to manage a lot in the game while dealing with this very simple Mancala mechanic that you're trying to work with while you add more ships to the harbor, because that's one of the many things you're going to be doing. There's a lot of pathways to victory, a lot of things you can do, and the Pirates expansion only further enhances it. I only had a chance to play this one recently, but for me, the fact that it was 45-23, I, I think this deserves more. And again, the nature of these is... Many times when you have, if I'm ordering these by rankings, some of these are going to be games that others don't think of as highly as I do, and others are going to be games that just haven't seen as much, haven't gotten into as much hands, which is why they're lower down on the BGG rankings. That's going to be 45, 23, number five. Number four is Austria. Coming in number three, we have Geisha's Road. This is coming to you from, this is Koji. I love Hanamakoji. I think it's fantastic. Hanamakoji Geisha's Road is coming in at 5576, 5576 on BGG, and I think Geisha's Road is a little bit more complex than Hanamakoji, but just as rewarding. Like Spies, Flies, Lies, and Supplies before it, these are the only two kind of expansions we have on the list, but uh, Geisha's Road, and this is the whole big box collection, it takes the core mechanic of I Cut, You Choose that made Hanamakoji so great, and Hanamakoji is so great. It's so ridiculously good. And Geisha's Road adds a little more complexity to the system, but one that is just as rewarding once you get past that initial front end load of extra rules going on. This whole box is chock full of modules, you can mix things up further, but if you like tight games that for two players, a very tight experience, lots of strategy, a little bit of I Cut, You Choose, or a lot of I Cut, You Choose, the whole game is I Cut, You Choose, 
choose. The whole game is having cards and then basically setting up choices, hoping your opponents pick wrong, even though they have the choice before you. Hanma Kojige Road is all about setting traps for your opponent based on what you know or can deduce, hoping they haven't figured out the same things as fast or as quickly as you have. Delightful experience. And again, I recommend Hanma Koji first if you haven't gotten it, but if you have, Geisha's Road is worth picking up and gives you a great time as well. Coming at number two, we have King Kill. This is ranked 6-6, six, six, or what is it? Ranked 6-6-7-3 six, six, on BGG. And King Kill, I think this was recently picked up by Steamforge. This is a two-player experience of worker placement and building a kingdom and a tableau that is very unique, very different, and I played it during the original crowdfunding campaign. I covered it, I previewed the game, and then reviewed the game during the prototype phase, and then I got it. And I debated whether I needed to keep it, which happens from time to time. Sometimes I get a game, the, I, like you know, a year and a half after I covered it, and the magic isn't in my head. I remember enjoying it, but there's so many games you have to make decisions. And I almost got rid of King Kill, just thinking like, hey, it was good, but I don't need to continue diving into it. And then I decided to play it, and I was like, nope, I remember why I liked it as much as I did, and I have really enjoyed this one. It's two-player worker placement. You create a kingdom, you build new spots every round, you place your workers trying to gather resources, trying to upgrade your workers, while trying to gather people into your kingdom to then turn into a head-to-head, -head, head head-to-head kind of Hearthstone kind of situation where you're building a line of enemies and attacking each other's castles every single round. There's so much going on. If, they, if that wasn't the pivot you're expecting, that makes sense. That wasn't the pivot I was expecting. But it works. The whole puzzle works. You have these cool, powerful spells. You have general spells. You're managing your, ma your mana and your magic. There's so much going on in King Kill that it makes it an immensely satisfying experience. Highly recommend checking this one out if you have a chance. I think it's just overall a very good time. Which brings us to my number one on the list. My number one, just to be very clear, it's not my favorite game on this list, although I do enjoy it, but it is the lowest ranked on this list, coming in at 8,602 on BGG's rankings. This is my number one pick. It's barely heard of. It's not even rated that well. I think it's like a rated like a 6.9, but I think it's really, really good, especially for what it's trying to do. And that's going to be Nine Minute Kingdom. Nine Minute Kingdom is a game that literally plays in nine minutes. It has a nine minute time frame on the box. Unlike other games that are saying they're eight minute kingdom games, this legitimately can play in nine minutes after you teach it. Teach the game, they can play in nine minutes. But basically just drafting cards to build a kingdom. It's fast paced, it's easy, it has a garbage box. Garbage, garbage. Like this box is terrible. We have to store things in there, especially if you sleeve your cards. I have like cards weirdly stacked here. You gotta do what you gotta do. I need a better box for it, but ultimately the actual game itself is very rewarding. I was surprised by how much I enjoyed this for how simple it is, but it's a quick, fast teach. It's a quick, fast play. It plays one to six players, although I prefer it at three to four players generally. Two players is good, higher players are good. I think three to four players is the sweet spot, but ultimately you're just drafting a bunch of cards to build your kingdom by the way you line up your cards, and then there's tons of modules to mix things up in case that basic puzzle gets boring. I do recommend checking this out if you have a chance to pick it up. It's not the, it's not the most expensive game, although I don't know how readily available it is. That's going to be nine in a kingdom, the hiddenness of hidden gems from 2022. In any case, that is basically what I have over here. These are my top 15 hidden gems from 2022. A full year has gone by. In the meantime, we've had time to let things settle. Let me know what games uh, what games you feel have been missed by the general population. What games do you feel are amazing, are incredible, but you never hear people talking about from 2022 specifically. In any case, then until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you found this video helpful. And as always, I hope you have a good one.